Foldminator, good evening. How are you? I'm a little bit late. I'm sorry about that, but we're gonna kick it off right now with some chess puzzles. That is the uh, story of the day. And hopefully we're gonna be pretty good at it. Uh, Espen starts off the day with the seven month resub. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just checking previous results, and it would seem that I was up at 3,162, and then something went wrong. So I guess we'll try to get back up to that tactics rating um, I had previously. Um, I'm okay, but I'm a little bit late. So clearly I didn't plan my day correctly. Uh, starting the stream 10 minutes later than what I was hoping to do. Uh, and therefore also being a bit stressed about it. <laughs> at the end. Okay, we're gonna start out with what looks like a pretty clean tactic. There's gotta be something here. Something involving a rook coming down to um, to g1 giving checkmate. Um, white is not really threatening anything. I mean he has quite a bit of pieces but no real threats. So Queen E3 is very tempting trying to get the checkmate with uh, Rook G1. Um, I don't see how I can lure the Queen away from the protection of the G1 square. So Queen E3 looks to be the move. Um, yeah, let's not overthink this. Uh, there's no checks, so it should be winning. Okay, I did overthink it, and I spent a minute on a 10-second uh, puzzle. But it's okay, because we got it right, and that is the most important thing. Adult bed <laughs> Bedwetter. Thank you for the four-month resub. Let's do them puzzles. No mistakes he says. And uh, my teacher Sam is hosting. Thank you. And uh, uh, hi guys. A uh, first time watching the stream from Nid. Welcome. I hope you uh, stick around and solve some puzzles alongside with me. Uh, always ready for some puzzles, says Atalos. But could you comment a little bit on the Carlson Karyakin game as well. That's very good insights. And um, I think you're a Norwegian, right? Uh, so I want to say to all the Norwegian viewers that I will be doing a uh, broadcast during the last round of the Sinkfield Cup. Uh, so if you check the uh, schedule, you can see that Honestly, I don't remember which day it's going to be, but uh, something like the 29th? I want to say 29th. No, 27th. Monday in, uh, in a, a week from now. So not this Monday, but the next Monday. I'm going to be doing Norwegian commentary on the final round in the Sinkfield Cup. Uh, thank you to Snyman for this seven-month resub. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in Magnus' games, I really recommend you you come watch that, Atlas. I love hammer puzzle sessions, says that Thomas. Time to get a row of green check marks. Yeah, I'm trying. It's difficult, though. It's... Very, very difficult, but I'm doing my bestest. Hey, Chess Bay, how are you? 
Uh, will it be on NRK, asks Ned. No, uh, NRK is only broadcasting world championships. Uh, so uh, um, I think my coverage on Twitch for, um, for the last round of the Sinkfield Cup will be the only Norwegian chess coverage uh, of that. So that's uh, for the Norwegian viewers. It's uh, Monday evening, Monday the 27th. Bursting with this four month resub. Thank you. Malice of Forethought is in the house. Ass is. Ah, yeah. Made a greeting and I didn't respond. And when I did respond, I saw that the one I had delayed. Responding to was malice of forethought. Also, hi to Soy Me and Vertrich for the tactical training. Happy Sunday from California, he says. Your second home. Yes, it is actually. True story. California, my second home. Uh, okay, let, let's move on. Let's uh, do another puzzle. Let's do another puzzle. The first one was easy. We got that. No problem. Next one also looks very easy. I give a check. I give a check. I give checkmate. Oh, no. There's... Um, okay. <laughs> uh, almost a bit trigger happy there. Uh, almost went uh, uh, queen c8. Not realizing that there's rook d8 blocking the check. And also, I have discovered that after Rook takes b7, uh, Black has the incredibly sneaky move, Bishop e5 check. Um, and then if you take with the knight, there's Queen h4 checkmate. And if you take with the queen, you lose your Rook. So Rook takes b7, then Bishop e5 is a very sneaky, sneaky trap. Um, however, however, I can go Rook A8 check when you cannot put something on D8. After King F H7, I go Queen takes F7. And then Queen F4 check is parried with uh, G3. And I lose my Knight, but I checkmate my opponent's King. And that is ultimately the goal of the game. So let's go for that. And solved! Two puzzles in a row. Is this guy a GM? Asks Electromagnetism. Yes. Yes, he is. As a matter of fact, I recently made it to the top 100 players in the world which is even better than a GM. Okay, uh, Rook B7, we can do an analysis on that since Asfoik asked about it and there's a really beautiful refutation. Uh, bear with me as we enter analysis mode. So if rook takes b7, that was the big, big trap in this position. Because then bishop e5, very, very sneaky. Uh, it's a check on the king, attacks the queen. Uh, it's en prix for two pieces. But if you take with the knight, then queen h4 is actually checkmate. And if you take with the queen, you lose your rook. So that was the trap that um, that black had in mind. Uh, but we did not fall for that one. And that means we can move on. Okay, so this queen seems to be in trouble. I would think we should trap her somehow. How can we trap? So rook d2 
rook d2 forces queen a3 and then knight b5 forks the queen and the bishop after which I win the bishop and the game um, so pretty straightforward to move line I guess you could make an argument to go knight b5 first threatening the bishop and threatening to to trap the queen you could go knight b5 no because then you take the bishop and then the knight yeah so therefore we go rook d2 first and then if queen a3 then knight b5 but instead uh, black chooses to give up his queen but you don't really have enough material so that's three solves in just a couple of minutes what a start to the day Aquila is in the house we got ourselves a pretty decent group of people watching. High level people in the house. Uh, Z Fox asks Do you recommend any books to learn to play the creative and offbeat openings you sometimes play? Um, yeah, no, that's the thing, right? That since it's offbeat, kind of the definition apply, implies that it's not really something people have written books about uh, and I, to be honest I don't feel like my openings is that offbeat but I had this really nice game this summer against Ivan Saric the reigning European champion in which I played a very strange opening which was actually played by Karana in Blitz games um, so I don't really have anything for you uh, in terms of books on uh, offbeat openings. Uh, I, I think you just gotta. It's so difficult, right? Because you gotta find your style of play, and then you can try something creative that isn't objectively good but fits your style of play. Uh, and that's a very, very complicated endeavor. Uh, which honestly requires a pretty high level. Um, and uh, even when I did it against Saric, I was so nervous because it's really offbeat. I'm, I'm taking a risk playing this kind of uh, strange opening. But it, it worked out beautifully. Uh, Hovestone with the six month resub, earning him the golden hammer. Yes! Thank you for your support. Uh, hello, Hammer. Hello, Chat, says Perpetual Stalemate. Thank you. No, I mean, hello to you, too, and thank you for watching. English is not my native language. I mess up sometimes. Improvise, says Rolo. Uh, yeah, no, that's actually good advice. Uh, honestly, I don't think if you want to play offbeat openings, the best way is just not study openings. As long as you don't study openings, it's going to be pretty much per definition offbeat. But you got to follow the principles. You got to get those pawns in the center. You got to get your pieces out, quick development, and get your king into safety. So you can play creative chess by just following principles to guide you in opening play. However, that's not going to work all the time because the, the kind of solid proper ways of playing an opening is often the way that has been the most analyzed because uh, because uh, it's the best way of playing the opening. These tactics are too easy for you says Evan. Don't you worry, don't you worry. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to get some very tough puzzles very soon. Your English is better than your Norwegian, man, says also. Yeah, no, that's actually funny, because in Norwegian, I have some kind of speech impediment that I, I struggle with my L's and my R's, and I don't have that in English. And that has always fascinated me, that, that kind of 
even if you struggle with some uh, letters or, or stuff uh, in one language, you can actually have the very same uh, letters uh, correctly in a different language. Okay, we got ourselves a study. Honestly, I think I've seen this one before. Um, there's a ton of black pawns and not a lot of white pieces, to be honest. Um, we're going to have to... What are we going to have to do? We're, I think we're going to have to protect the bishop. So the bishop is going to be a crucial part to our strategy of giving checkmate to the black king. Um, so my first idea is something like queen d2. Uh, but honestly, I don't see how I can punish him if he just takes my bishop. So one of my biggest plan is somehow uh, winning his queen by combining checkmating threats and the threat of kind of skewering him on the um, on the uh, on the f file. So something like queen d2 prevents him from going king e2. So that's also important. I want to stop him from playing king to e2, uh, by which he kind of escapes from my pieces. All my pieces are very much on the uh, on the king side on on this little quarter of of the board, and I want to make sure that his king stays there and doesn't run off to the queen side where I have no chance of giving checkmate. So queen d2 is my initial thought, uh, but then I think he can just take my bishop. I think he can just take my bishop. Bishop f4 says Matutalu. Um, maybe that's brilliant. Bishop f4, queen takes f4. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the follow-up is, but I think you're on the right track. I really like this idea of possibly giving up the bishop. Maybe something like uh, bishop d6. Bishop d6, and then queen takes d6. And then you go check. No. That's not going to work out. Go for stalemate with queen d2, says Shinji Kahi Chess. Um, yeah, I'm not really happy with stalemate. I realize that he has a lot of pawns, but I think with the bishop, I'm not really at a risk of losing. So I don't... Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't feel like uh, I need to go for a stalemate. So what uh, what Shinkari is is suggesting is something like queen d2, king takes g3, queen g2 check, king h4, and then queen f2 gives a check on the king, threatens the queen, and when the queen takes, it's stalemate. Um, but I don't think I want to go for a draw. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't feel like this position is so such a disaster for, for white. Maybe I'm wrong. It is a lot of pawns. Five pawns. So if ever black were to manage an exchange of queens, I'm pretty dead. Pretty dead if he exchanges the queens. Bishop e1 suggests Rollo and uh, Bang Tidy. Bishop e1, yeah. But do I really address the issue I'm having with the king going to e2? Bishop e1, king e2, queen d2 check, king f1. 
Not really, right? Feels like the king is getting away from trouble. And I'm not going to manage to give checkmate like that. Huh, after queen d2, he can actually go king g4. He doesn't even have to take the bishop. He can avoid the stalemate by going king g4, preparing queen f3 next. Basically, any move you suggest, you gotta calculate what happens on king e2. That's why bishop f4 says Matalu. Yeah, you're right. Bishop f4, and it's a draw. It's starting to come back to me. I'm pretty sure I did this puzzle previously, and I got it wrong. I got it wrong. A lot of people in the chat. Hello, everyone. We're doing some chess puzzles today. Do keep in mind that if you know the answer... Please do not post it in the chat as it ruins the my training value and the honestly I think it also in ruins the enjoyment of the puzzle. You're very welcome to try and, and calculate. But if you are confident that you have the right answer, keep it to yourself and give yourself credit if you got it right. Uh, electromagnetism asks, how much time do you think you need to give a five-year-old to tell whether he might turn in to be a special chess player? Um, five-year-old is way too soon. Uh, you cannot tell. Uh, if the thing about, yeah, the thing about young kids is that they can get really, really good at anything they really care about. So as long as he's fueled by self-motivation, uh, uh, a kid can be brilliant at pretty much anything. But if you're the one pushing, then he, they can get really, really good, but they're not going to be elite. It's my opinion. But of course, I'm Norwegian, so we have a bit of a don't push your kids kind of attitude. Um... So, I mean, my suggestion would be to manipulate your kids. Uh, don't ask them to play with you, but kind of play with an older sibling or your spouse or something like that. And kind of trick the kid into getting curious about chess. Because then they might get that self-motivation. Um, yeah, okay, so I think Bishop F4 is right, and it's going to be a stalemate. Um, okay. They're not really going to make it easy for me, are they? Um, Bishop e3 seems like a move to get the queen away from this square. Bishop e3, but then maybe queen d6. Uh, I was not expecting him to fight me trying to make a draw with a piece up. Um, maybe bishop d6. Bishop d6 is decent. Now, bishop d6 is terrible. It's as terrible now as it was the previous move. Bishop e3, but then queen d6. I can go check and then bishop e3. Hmm. 
No. Bishop e3, queen d6. Bishop takes b6, maybe? I was not expecting him to fight me on this. Bishop e3. Bishop e3. Bishop e3, queen d6, bishop takes. B6? Maybe. Check. 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 Bishop e3, queen d6. Bishop takes b6. Threatens. Honestly, I'm not really sure what it threatens. Uh, it threatens queen g2. So he needs to go queen g3, and then I take on h5, queen g4, queen f7 check. Should be a draw. Not a, very clean, though. It's This is a study, so very often the solutions are very clean and fancy. Uh, is the round two of the Sinkfield Cup today? asks Spitcher. Yes, it's starting in 30 minutes. Bishop e3 suggests Table of Doom. So you agree with me. Uh, I also forgot that Vespen has uh, uh, announced his seven-month resub. Thank you for your support. Uh, Bishop e3, queen d6, bishop f4, says Borkrow. That's a pretty good suggestion. Just going back and forth. Like a boring, very boring, but effective. Yeah, that's pretty clever. Okay, so he takes it, and now I go check, check, right? Check, check, and it's stalemate. Uh, were you just 100% self-motivated as a kid, asks Chess Bay. Uh, yeah. Uh, none of my parents played chess. So um, th they played a very important role in kind of um, what's in Nor Norwegian is called uh, <laughs> but like just making, they were finding out how you sign up for a chess club and kind of always uh, and giving me, uh, joining me to tournaments, uh, hanging out with me uh, for those. Um, just, you know, generally making sure that I had the opportunities I needed. But as for studies and, and stuff like that, it was always on, on my uh, what I wanted to do. Uh, where can I see a broadcast of today's cup match with Magnus? asks Klu Daman. Uh, Kluex, sorry. Um, can someone post that in chat? I th I don't remember the channel for the St. Louis Chess Club, but it's it. There's a Twitch channel you can follow to watch the uh, the games from the Singfield Cup. Uh, Chess Bay, if you can post the, the Twitch link. 
facilitating. Thank you, Atlas, for giving me the English word for for Tilhetelegin. They always facilitated my improvement and kind of things. Okay. STL Chess Club. So if you want to watch it on Twitch, the link is posted by Halvard and Borkro in the chat. Okay, we're going to move on to the next one because we actually got four in a row. That's pretty huge. This is another queen and bishop geometry. And this is another one I got wrong in the past. I remember this one. I remember making a mistake in this puzzle previously. If only I could remember something about what I messed up. Because I don't... I remember that the solution was pretty short. It was just like four moves. But I don't really... I feel like... We forced the black king to h6 somehow. But I don't understand how that's going to help. Check. 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 No. So I guess we're going to have to force the black king to a white square to improve the position of our bishop. That's my best guess. So something like queen e7 and after queen g5 we go queen somewhere. Ooh, queen e4, that's interesting. Queen e4 is very interesting. Yeah, so queen e7, queen g5, queen e4, king h5, check, check. Queen e7, queen g5, queen e4. When um, I just think a fire alarm went off in my house. I may have to evacuate the premises. Just eat the queen and it's a draw, says Suyumi. Um, yeah, I have bigger ambitions for this puzzle. I want to get it right. And to get it right, I think we got to win this position. Okay, so queen, queen e7, queen g5, queen e4 check, forcing king h5, because otherwise then there's king g3, there's uh, queen g2 winning. So queen e7, queen g5, queen e4, king h5. I forced black onto a white square, and now can I improve my bishop? Bishop e8, is that going to help? Maybe queen h7 first, then queen h6. Queen h6. Check. Uh, 
Mm, it's not easy. It's not easy. First a helicopter, now a dog barking, and then a fire alarm. Oh, you heard the dog? Uh, I, I may have to uh, shut my window then. I'm not sure about the helicopter. Uh, I don't get why King G3 there is winning. Okay, so Queen E7 check. B Queen uh, uh, G5. Queen E four king g3 and if king g3 then queen d2 check and now king h4 runs into queen h3 checkmate and if he goes king f4 then queen d2 actually skewers the the king and queen uh, because the king needs to move and it cannot move to any square where it still protects the queen so that was my idea Yeah, Matu, I think you're right. I think it's Queen D8. But it's very anti intuitive. It's very anti intuitive. I'm gonna shut it down. I, now I hear the motorcycle. Also, the uh, most trafficked uh, bus route passes through outside the window. Uh, yeah, Matu, uh, I think you're right. I, th I think you got it. Um, but I think that one was so, so difficult. Uh, and you got two in a row now. So if you get the next one as well, we're going to time you out for, um, for revealing answers. Okay, it's very clever because... Yeah, it's very clever because this is the position. No. Yeah, so this is the position. Earlier I was thinking queen e7 check and then queen e4 check in this position. But actually by doing this weird thing, uh, I get to give the check on d4 instead. So d4 instead of e4, that is the only difference compared to the variation I calculated. However, there's a very huge important point here that because the queen is on d4 instead of e4, in this position we have queen h8 checkmate, which is just a huge move uh, winning the game. So that was, I think the, the, the geometry of the bishop and queen working together is so so very difficult because it's it's so easy for the king to kind of slip away but this was oh and the fire alarm goes once again <laughs> now i'm slightly nervous but at least 
they're turning it off, which does seem to suggest they got stuff under control. Okay, we're going to go for the next one. Okay, seems to be tactics going on right here. A rook takes e7 doesn't work, because after queen takes, the queen is pinned uh, with the king on the other end. So what are our alternatives? Queen takes b5, reasonably tempting. Can we give checkmate somehow? Any checks? Rook h7 is a possibility. Rook h7 trying to get a new queen. But then probably just rook g8. And I'm not sure what I'm doing. I could give a check. Nah, I don't think it's going to work. Part of my problem is that this rook on c1 is not contributing at all. So I only really have three attacking pieces. The queen, the rook, and the pawn. And... Frankly, it feels to me like that's not going to be enough. That's not a lot of attacking pieces. Because he has all his pieces pretty close to his king. Malice of forethought. Yeah, I addressed your suggestion. And the problem is, after rook takes e7, queen takes e7, I cannot move my queen. Because the king is uh, under attack if I take the black rook. Um, rook h7. Says Matu Talu. Um, yeah, that is my first thought. But Rook H7, then Rook G8. Uh, and it's not really clear what White is doing next. I mean, it's not really clear what black is doing either, but black does have the extra piece, so he doesn't really need any other plan than just getting out of the attack and, and winning with an extra piece. Rook h7, rook g8. g7 is suggested. suggested. Yeah! But the thing is, the thing is, I don't like the, I, I, I feel like if, if black were to manage to exchange the queens there after g7, then what am I really doing? Uh, maybe white can do something like queen d6. Well, I get a lot of pawns, but I'm not winning that. I'm, I'm maybe making a draw. But g7 kind of... The thing about g7 is that it blocks the rook's influence along the 7th rank. So by playing g7 after rook h7, I'm, I'm basically yet removing another piece from the attack. Because then the rook isn't contributing at all. Um, so that just, it feels, it feels off. It feels off to me. Uh, Eggy with an interesting suggestion. Queen b5, queen d7, then rook takes e7. Yeah, the thought is good, right? Because then you cannot take with the queen. However, if you take with the king, then queen back to e5, then rook e6 gives us the same trouble. Yeah, it's a check, but it's a counter check-ish, because the queen gets pinned. Hmm. 
Yeah, this is a tricky one. Is rook h7 followed by king f1 and getting the other rook too slow? asks uh, Suyomi. Uh, yeah, I think so, because then I'm, I'm, well, I think so, but, rook h7, king f1, king f1, it's very slow. So slow. However, it does address what I was talking about earlier, about only having three pieces in the attack. If I could get my other rook contributing, that would be pretty massive. King f1. That's a huge move. And then if queen t6, I can play rook takes e7. Rook takes e7, queen takes e7, queen b8 check. Uh, queen d8, rook e1, king d7, queen takes b7. And I win the rook on a6. And if he's not playing queen d6, how is he addressing the, the threat of rook e1? Can he take my G pawn? If he takes with the G rook, I can go rook h8. If he takes with the other rook, I go rook e1. Rook e1, he cannot protect e7. Wow, king f1. King f1 is so sick. Why not rook h1, asks Atalas. Yeah, no, we're discussing rook h7 first. Rook h7, rook g8, and then king f1. Just trying to get the last remaining piece, the worst placed piece, into the attack. And, uh, yeah. Looks pretty good. The chess kid asks, what about rook d6, rook d7? Yeah, but then you're just so huddled up. Uh, I probably have something like queen e6. Queen e6, rook f8, g7. I'm just giving checkmate. Because then you just completely lost all your activity with a rook along the 6th rank. Yeah, no, that, that looks very good. King f1. Amazing move. Honestly, I'm shocked this is a puzzle, because this feels so dangerous for white. So many black pieces around white's pretty fragile king. Okay, so I need to kind of get some exchanges, right? So rook f3. It's pretty high up on my list. Just chasing the knight away as soon as possible. Rook f3. 
definitely a move. Uh, rook f3, then maybe bishop a5 check. Bishop a5 check, king f2. Knight c2 maybe. This is very scary for white. Very, very scary. I guess the good thing about rook takes f7 is that it threatens checkmate with rook takes g7. Um, but it's an insanely risky move. Yeah, this is not really an attacking puzzle. This is more defending puzzle. You're a piece up, and can you exploit that? At the moment, I'm leaning towards no. Maybe I should just take the nine. Take the nine and then rook f3. That protects a lot of stuff. And I do like it when my stuff is protected. Takes, takes, rook f3. Forcing the queen back. And then I'm reasonably safe. In some lines, after having forced the queen back, I could even take on, you know, Take, take, rook f3. Looks pretty effective to me. Attack is often the best defense, though. Am I right, says Gitro. Yeah, I'm not sure you're right in this case. It's important not to overextend yourself. The thing about rook takes f7 is that it also allows for... Well, it means that I can never put my king on the f-file, because if I do, then rook takes f7 back. It's going to be not only an attack on both my king and queen, but it's going to be check, so that I don't have time to take this rook in the corner. Yeah, now I think I'm going to go for this. Uh, getting some pieces off the board and parrying the uh, immediate threats. Okay, that wasn't so hard. Uh, that, that's a very good start to the stream. Getting quite a few solves. Oh, this is a nightmare. Okay, so for the first move, ah, I have rook d5. So I need to choose between rook d5 and king e6. Those are the only two options. So I'm guessing rook d5. Rook d5, the king moves away. It's very dangerous. And then somehow we need to protect this guy. Okay, so king e6. I'm definitely not winning. I think I'm trying to make a draw. That's my best guess. Trying to make a draw. And really struggling to make it. Okay, so I mean, queen d6 is not going to work. King e7 is not going to work. So I need to keep this rook on g7 protected. So I have king e6, check, king f6, check, king e6, very dangerous, but could work. 
Rook d5, King g2. Threatens the rook on g7. Not really in a great spot to protect that rook. Although you would think I could do something along the lines of rook e7. Check, check. Check. Ah, uh, this is a tough one. There's only two possible uh, moves for black, but both of them seem pretty stressful. King e6, queen e8, king f6, queen f8, and then king e6. I don't really see how white is making progress. Maybe you can be a beast and play f4. That's pretty sick. If you do something like, maybe even in this position, king e6. Can you go f4? Kind of just giving up that pawn to block the diagonal. King e6, queen takes h6. King e6, queen takes h6, then I can go king f7. I mean, I'm not saying it's great, but I'm protecting my stuff. Uh, thank you, Chess Bay, for gifting a sub to the Norwegian chess giant. And to Vertrich. Thank you, Chess Bay. Maybe it's boring, but rook d5 and then rook e7 says Neubauer. Oh, and another gift sub to Spoiled Kitty. Thank you, Chespe. Uh, rook d5, check, king g2, rook e7. It does make a lot of sense in terms of I have some extra pawns, so I could give some away to ease the pressure and honestly from this position if I get it like a queen ending with equal amount of pawns that would be a success because right now black is under a lot of pressure another gift sub to Timothy thank you chess bay <laughs> and to Z Fox 41 altogether wow Aquila is going to have a bad guess on King E6. Yeah, at, the, at this point, that's what I'm doing. It's just guesswork. The thing about King E6 is I'm kind of scared about something like F4. Yeah, no, actually, King E6, F4, G takes F4. Um, there's some tactics along the lines of king e6, f4, g takes f4, rook takes e5, queen takes e5, rook e1. No, that doesn't work because there's rook e7. But the good thing about this rook d5 move is that it doesn't really allow for uh, f4 tactics. And it really does help trying to exchange off some of these rooks, creating so much madness. So from a practical standpoint, 
you should go rook d5 just to get rid of some of those attacking pieces. You might end up in a bad queen ending, but bad queen ending is definitely better than, you know, checkmate. Rook d5 check is a must, says also. Uh, okay, if you say so. You were wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was a very, very tricky one. To play king e6, you have to have nerves of steel. That, that would be so... I guess we're going to open the analysis board. It's got to be the right... I just played rook d5 when I knew that I had an excuse in chat to get away with it. Okay, so rook d5, king g2, rook e7. Ah, oh, yeah, no, you can just take and put a rook e... Yeah, because if you can get rid of some of the white rooks, then, you know, it's kind of fine. But as long as the white rook is on an open file, this is going to be so, so dangerous. So the right answer was king e6. I was kind of scared about this-ish things. Oh, and the computer says that the best move against f4 is just taking and going rook d, king d5. Oh, computer. You have no emotions. Very helpful in chess. I have my king on c4. Computer doesn't care. Computer just says, well, I'm two pawns up. I'm one pawn up, really, if you just take one of these guys. But pawn up? That, that's good enough. King on, on c4? I don't care. I don't care. Let's continue. Take this one. Uh, queen d7. Of course. Queen d7, winning. Yeah, because in the rook ending, having that king on c4 is such a monster. So as long as you get the queens out of the way, that king is doing pretty well. You know, they say you have to have an active king in the end game. I'm not sure this is what they thought about, but apparently it applies in more situations than, uh, than I had anticipated. Uh, so the puzzle is just getting into a one end game, says Spoiled Kitty. No, 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 it's not. No, the puzzle is just about not losing. So here, white can easily make a draw by just going back and forth with the queen checking. But the point of the puzzle is how do you get out of this tough spot with the king in the center uh, and the white rooks really doing some attacking chess um, towards the king. So um, that was just a survival puzzle. How do you survive the uh, the onslaught that was currently going on? Magic Andy with the seven month resub. Why didn't you play Nurstam Grand Prix yesterday? He asks. Uh, there is an answer to that question. Um, I'm gonna tell you. I, I did not play the rapid tournament in Oslo yesterday because I decided I would rather watch Premier League soccer and also because it's a bit of a far stretch to travel to Nostal and also they have seven rounds with a 30 minute time control which means that uh, in order to just I mean, the tournament lasts for nine hours. So I actually decided that I'm fine playing a five-hour tournament, but nine hours, that's too much. Effie is raiding with a group of 35. Wow, thank you, people, from Effie's stream. We're doing chess puzzles.
Too many lines in that puzzle. Not solvable, says Oslo. Yeah, I don't know. I always think that it's solvable, but this time I wasn't able to. Okay, let's move on to the next puzzle. We have some attacking chances. However, and this is a big however, uh, we are currently a rook down. Our opponent has two rooks, whereas we only have one, which is a bit of an issue. I could see some trouble arising from that fact. So what are we going to do about it? I guess we could give a check on h1 and then after king e2 there's queen h5 check king d2 and then queen h6 check if we're happy with the draw that seems to be the way to do it although yeah probably that's the way to do it can we get more than a draw? I have my doubts. The good thing, I mean, basically the only reason black is still alive is the fact that the white queen is so offside. I mean, it's, it's stuck basically in one corner of the board while stuff is happening on the other side. So yes, I'm a rook down. But temporarily, I guess you could say I'm a queen for a rook up. Because this queen is really not doing anything. So it's important to strike. And to strike quickly. Um, so the big issue I'm having is, do you go for the win? Or are you content with the draw? Rook h1, maybe also uh, rook g1 is interesting. Rook g1, check, check, check. Yeah, so rook h1 is at least a draw for black. But honestly, I can't even tell whether or not we're supposed to be winning or if we're happy to make a draw. Because I feel like with the queen completely stuck on b2, then um, then we might actually be looking for a win. Thank you, Chess Bay, gifting a sub to Spuriki. Bishop g4, says Malice of Forethought. Yeah, that did cross my mind. Bishop g4 is definitely a move I'm considering. However, after bishop g4, I'm afraid about rook takes g4. Because uh, then he takes my bishop, and if I take back, there's a bishop e6 check. That really hurts. So I don't think bishop g4 is going to work. And then you're getting pretty low on options. Queen d2, then probably... Queen G D2, maybe you can give a check on G8 and then go Queen C1. And I don't really see a checkmate there. I see how to win a rook, but the fact is that I'm a rook and two pawns down. So even if I win a rook, that's not a success in itself. Uh, Rollo says rook h1, rook g1, bishop g4, because then you cannot take it. It's a pretty solid suggestion. Yeah, but regardless of what the follow-up is, I think we agree that rook h1 needs to be played. 
Okay. Apparently not. What was it? Bishop h3? Just go and grab that rook. Yeah, can you explain to me why bishop h3 doesn't work? Yeah, well, probably it does work. Okay, so bishop h3, then bishop e6. Just giving away that bishop. And then king g, rook g. This is very scary. Very scary stuff. Okay, but apparently this is not winning for black. However, what was winning is rook queen h5. Uh, okay. I guess you're covering the escape square. Is this really that effective? I guess it is. Why not queen d2? Well, queen d2, even I realized it's not going to work out. Because then, yeah, this check, this is actually what I said. This check, and then queen c1. And yeah, you win a, a rook, but it's not very helpful when you're uh, going into an endgame with two pawns down. Queen h5. Wow. I did not even consider that move. Okay, that was a tough one. But that also means that we missed two puzzles in a row and our rating is just going down so fast. We need to get back in the game. Okay, I see that if I take the queen, it's going to be checkmate through uh, knight e4, followed by knight takes f2, check and mate. And I'm very scared. I'm very scared about this bishop threatening my king. I have no words to describe how scared that makes me. Really? I'm supposed to survive this? <laughs> I mean, this is terrifying. I guess queen b7? I need to attack this bishop somehow. And queen b7 is almost the only way to do it. Ooh, I guess I could play a3. Uh, a3, and if bishop e a5, then I can take the queen. a3, a3, just attacking the bishop, a3, do you have any freaky moves? After a3. Ooh, a3, knight b1. a3, knight b1. That is freaky. Knight b1, and if I take the bishop, then rook c1 is checkmate. Ooh. Ah, and therefore maybe I should go queen b7. Because then if knight b1, queen takes b4 is check. Uh, counter check. Uh, okay, so back to queen b7. Queen b7. If you move the knight, then I just take the bishop and then take the queen. And I'm up material. Two pieces for a rook. Yes! Although, I mean, a3, knight, b1, you could go king, d1. 
Ah, but then queen c7. That's going to be very scary. Yeah, so queen b7, trying to get rid of this bishop. If queen a5, then queen takes c8. If bishop a5, then bishop takes queen. Yeah, I think this is it. I don't understand what went wrong. I really don't understand it. I guess knight b5 is the problem. Knight b5 I, I did miss. Knight b5, I have to move the king, then queen takes f6. Becomes pretty dangerous. What on earth was I supposed to do here? If this doesn't work, probably the answer is queen a3. Queen a3, bishop takes, and then queen takes, bishop takes d8. But queen a3, I mean, that's, wow, queen a3. Did anyone in chat say queen a3? Uh, Rollo, oh, Rollo said queen a3. Yeah. Yeah, queen a3, that was good. Yeah, no, there's, yeah, no. No, queen a3 loses a lot of material. But I think the, the thing was just that there was so much material already. I mean, white in this position, white is up three pawns and a piece. So yeah, you lose a lot of a lot of stuff by going queen a3, but you don't lose that much. How is a3 not right though? Says Hiroki. Uh A3, then knight b1. Let's do the analysis board. Uh, a3, the knight b1, blocks the, the rook. So if takes, then queen c1 check, rook c1 check. And if, uh, if king d1, I thought maybe queen c7 is checkmate. Oh, but you can sacrifice the queen. That I did not consider. Uh, A3 was the correct move. Never mind, it wasn't Queen A3. I was so convinced it was Queen A3, I didn't even look at what the correct move was. Wow, A3 is the correct move. And if Knight B1, then King D1. And if Queen C7, trying to get the checkmate on C2. Oh, you even have queen c4, but also rook takes, queen takes rook is also very good. Just getting those black pieces off the board and then winning with all the, with the entire king side intact. So a3 was the right move. Oh, I was so convinced it was queen a3. Yeah, no, this, yeah, this isn't going to work out. I 
Yeah, and if queen b7, then this, yeah. It was a3 after all. That was my initial move. I just forgot or something. These problems are somewhat tricky, says Oslo. Yeah, I agree. Very, very tricky. Okay, but we're going to keep going. I mean, at some point, we got to get one right. I, I think that was three mistakes in a row. Not the greatest of streams. I may have overperformed previously, previous streams. Queen a4 looks good. And then king c1, queen a1 check. Uh, queen a4 going once, going twice, sold for queen a4. Uh, honestly, I didn't even consider that move, but bishop takes here, looks good. Uh, check, check, uh, check, check, checkmate. It's got to be good. Plus two. Okay. Moving on. Getting into the steam. Getting into the habit of getting puzzles right. Ooh, I can sacrifice the queen. No. Oh, that would be so cool. Queen takes, king takes, bishop c8 check. But he goes back to g3. Hmm. I guess h5. Very much an option. h5. Is the queen sacrifice ever going to work? Mm, probably not. So h5. Honestly, h5 wins the piece back. Currently, black is a piece down. h5 wins the piece back. Do we need to make it more complicated than that? I'm a piece down. I can play a move that wins a piece back. Feels like a solid, solid idea. However, h5 does allow knight g5. Knight g5, we may want to prevent that. h5, knight g5, pretty scary. Ooh, I have queen h5 check. I did not even notice that. I have queen h5 check. So that means... Bishop d6 threatens queen h5 check as well as queen takes uh, g4. Or do I really threaten queen takes g4? Maybe, maybe not. At the very least, it's an interesting queen sacrifice. So something like bishop, bishop d6, g3. Three maybe no. H five H five knight g five H takes on G four and then if Queen takes I have Bishop takes G two. Um it should be winning. Ah, uh, so I have the Queen h5 possibility it feels like in every single line if i could just get my bishop to d6 i would have so many threats so many threats Bishop d6, I guess my greatest concern is just knight e5. But 
just take, take, take. I like queen sacks, says Aquila. Yeah, no, I'm definitely considering that. But I think for the moment, it doesn't really work as long as the king can step back to g3. So I'm trying to do something like bishop d6, followed by the queen sacrifice on g4. Or maybe queen h5 check, and then bishop d6 check. And then the sacrifice. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. Uh, queen h5 check, king g3, bishop d6, knight e5, rook takes e5. Um, yeah, that's good. Is it? Ah, should be good. Mm. Yeah. Checkmate to your king. I only got one point for that. Oh, that's that's rough. I was very happy with that one. I was very happy with that one. Only one point. Okay, another checkmating puzzle. How do we get the king on h5? Ooh, this is going to be a tricky one. We need to get a check somehow, but right now all our pieces are not really in a position to give a check. And our queen is under attack. Ah, oh, I can just take the knight. Uh, rook takes knight, takes back, bishop f7 check, rook takes, queen takes, king g5, and then queen g7 followed by queen takes g4 check and mate. Any objections? No, I don't think so. Uh, it seems to work out because he didn't take it back. And then what? Check. Kind of allows the king to escape. I'm still in exchange down. I, I did get a piece for nothing, but I'm still material down. Yeah, I need to keep this king trapped in this little box in the corner. Maybe I could just go back. Rook g7. Moving a rook that was under attack, threatening queen f3, checkmate. 
Rook g7, Queen e1 on the move. It's very, very close. Yeah, because I don't want to give Rook h4 check, because then he kind of gets back. The king gets off the edge. And uh, it's going to make it more difficult. I, I'm going to need more pieces to control squares than if the, the king is on the edge of the board. If queen e1, then bishop d1, says uh, Suyomi. Yeah, but the thing is that he can just take that bishop, uh, covering the diagonal at the same time. Queen f3 to avoid the trade. Yeah, but then queen e1 gives a check to my king. And then I got to be concerned about king safety. And I'm not really keen on that. I want to just win this. No problem. Queen f3, queen e1, king h2, takes, check, takes, takes, huh, that is winning actually. It actually is winning, I think. Check. Hmm. Queen f3, queen e1, king h2. I guess he has to go bishop e6. Bishop e6. Check King G five. I'm getting a headache from this puzzle. Queen H three is coming, says the chess kid. That is a very solid point. That is a checkmate in one move that I missed. Bishop E six, then Queen H three. That's solid argued. Well argued. I mean. Okay, I guess we're going to go for it then. Yeah, now this I had under control. Now I give the check. Now this should win the queen. Or maybe actually even more than the queen. Okay, solved. Plus three. That's a good one. Yeah, I... I struggled with the checkmate in one move. That was a uh, real... Uh, real issue for me there. Um, I guess we're going to contemplate how the pawn ending is. Knight f5. Takes, takes. King d7, king e2, king c6. King f3. That's not even close to winning. But I don't see how this can be a puzzle unless knight f5 is winning. 
because otherwise it just looks like uh, an ending where really anything could happen. Knight f5, takes, takes, king d7. There's a point here somewhere. h4. h4, g takes h4. g3, h6. King g2, king c6, takes. No, king h3, takes, takes. Go there, 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 there. That's winning. Okay, so knight f5 takes, takes, king d7, h4. I guess g4, h5. No, g4, then f3 wins. So you gotta play h6. And then takes, takes, king e2, king c6. King f3, takes, king g4, uh, e4, e4, king h5, king d5, king g6, king e5, g4, Zugzwang, and that's the win. Okay, I think this is it. It has to be this, because otherwise this couldn't really be a puzzle. Okay, that was a good one. Nine points. Finally, some accurate calculation and gets the points. Plus nine. Yeah, that was that was a nice one. Rocking the plus nine points. Almost getting back to where we started. <laughs> This makes my head hurt. Thank God I'm not a professional chess player. Doing this under pressure would be exhausting. Um, yeah, sometimes. The thing about puzzles is that you know there's a solution. So you, it, it's difficult to practice the real life situation. Because in a puzzle you know that there's something there. So what makes practical play more difficult is that you got to treat every situation as if there's a puzzle, even though it's not, because you're looking for something good, but most of the time nothing good is there. So you're calculating lots of stuff that doesn't work, and you don't know if there's something that does work. So at some point you just got to move on in life and just decide, this is the best that I can find, I'm going to play this, and hope that nothing better existed. Uh, yeah, very good point from the chess kid. If this was a real game, finding out whether knight f5 would work, going into the pawn ending, would be much tougher. Because I exploited the fact that since it was a puzzle, I knew it would work. Because uh, uh, there was no other way that white could win by force, or, or win by a, a sequence of moves under 15 moves. So um, so I, I, because it was a puzzle, I knew that uh, knight f5 was the right move. And that makes it a lot more, a lot easier to, to figure out. Okay, let's do uh, one more. So, oh, another end game. I'm very happy with this, seeing as how we did. 
on the previous one. Um, not really sure what the problem is. King, king b2, king d3. Uh, and then he can choose whether he wants to go to c3 or c2. So in order to avoid him getting that choice, It's probably something very tricky in here, because otherwise this wouldn't be a puzzle, you know? Yeah, he needs... So go and take it, and then king a3 to stop b4. Um, hmm. King b2, king d3, he takes, and he has to go king c3. Or does he? King c4, then a5. King c3, king b1, yeah. So king b2, king d3, takes, king c3. Uh, and then a6, if king c4, then a5 wins. If king c2, then a5 also wins. But then he has b4. Yeah, so I cannot go a6 because of b4. So I need to go... King a3, king c4, but on king c4 I need to go a5, and then king c3 is a draw. Uh, so I need to be trickier going into this. So my original idea was really something like king b2, king d3, king a3. Um, but after king a3, he can probably just go king c4. So king b2, king d3. And a5. And yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, this is interesting. It, it's not entirely clear to me what the, the answer is. He has king c4 and a lot of variations. King b2, king d3, a5, king c4. No, not king c4. Then he goes, after a5, he goes king d2. 
and then he has the opposition. Ah, no, because I have a4. Ooh, king d2, I have a4. And I guess that's going to do it. King b2, king d3, a5. If king d2, then a4. If king c4, then I take. Yeah, that's it. Or is it? Because a5 now? Is there any reason? I'm not sure that is it, because if king b2, king d3, a5 is correct, then why couldn't you do a5 on the first move? Maybe you need to go a5 first to stop king d2. So if king b2, if king b2, you can go king d2, a5, king d3. And then you don't have a4. So therefore, you have to go a5 first. So that he has to go king d3, and after king b2, king d2 uh, runs into a4, and if king c4, then he kind of gives up the option to go king c2. Yeah, so the answer is a5 first, so that the king keeps control over the d2 square. Ah, that's very clever. a5, a4... I go king c2. Yeah, so a5, king d3, king b2. And if king d2, then a4. And if king c4, then I take on a2. And the reverse doesn't work, because if king d2 first, then king b2 first, then king d2. a5, king d3. However, if king b2, king d2, you could argue that black can just go a6 to get that tempo. You could even argue that black can just take the pawn. Okay, I don't understand the difference between king b2 immediately and a5. I feel like I'm very close. Uh, but right now, honestly, I feel like both of those lines are winning. That it doesn't matter. The difference is king d4. Okay, there's a pawn on c5 kind of preventing king d4 d4. So um, I'm not sure what you mean. a5 then king d4. There's a pawn on c5. He cannot play king d4. Uh, he means king e4. a5 king e4. King b2 king d5 takes. It's no problem. There's no issue. a5, king e4, king b2, king d5 takes. Um, I have plenty of time to do that. a5. Ooh, a5, king e4. King b2. King d3 takes on a2, king c4. Now that's also fine. King b2 works because of king d2, a6. Yeah. But right now, both variations are working, right? Just so that we're clear.
Ah, uh, A4 doesn't work. Ah, uh, so... No way. King B2, King D3. My idea is A5, King D2, A4. Yeah, it does work, because I'm just taking the pawn on B3. What is the difference between King B2 and A5? I have no idea. Okay, I'm gonna see what chat says. King b2, king d3, a5. a5, king c4. The chess kid is stumped. And if the chess kid is stumped, it's no surprise I'm stumped as well. Um, yeah. That makes two of us. But on the bright side, I think both moves are winning. So in that regard, I, I mean, I cannot really go wrong. But normally, since this is a puzzle, it should be on only one of the two moves that is winning. And I cannot understand what is wrong with A5. And honestly, I like my idea of preventing King a5, maybe a5, king e2. Yeah, a5, king e2. a5, king e2. Then king b2, king d3. Yeah, that's it, I think. a5, king e2. And you just stand there. So king b2, king b2, king d3, a5. Okay, I think it's king e2. Okay, what was the idea here? To go a6, right? And then a5, then a4. Then a queen. Yeah, so I had the right initial idea <laughs> some time ago. But, um, uh, but I struggled fig figuring out the uh, the details of the other stuff. Uh, 
Uh, so I think if a5, then king e2. And then we just play the waiting game. Yeah, because this is a draw. King e2, and if king c... Yeah, and we just hang, hang around. And once you go here, then this is a draw. But I cannot go here, because this is the position we had in the game. Yeah, so king e2. Okay, apparently king e4 is a draw as well. I guess it's for the same reason. Yeah. King e2 is a bit more intuitive. Uh, so that's why king b2 was the only move. And this is a Zugzwang thing. Because you need to have king c2. You need to have king c2 when I take this one. Regardless of whether you get the black c pawn or not, when black takes on a2, you need to be able to respond king c2. Which is why in this position, white needs to go king d2. And then this is a draw once again. But the point of the big point of the puzzle was a4, that we time it so that we can play a4 here. And to illustrate, if a5 here, then now this is a draw. Because now you don't have that a4 move, since the king is covering the pawn from getting forward. And here you don't have anything better than taking, and then this is a draw. So this is the point that um, whoever kind of whoever is to move here messes up. If it's black to move here, it's a draw. If it's white to move, he loses. So this is the situation we were looking for, which is called a uh, repro yeah re reciprocal. I guess it's not entirely it, because normally it's one guy wins or the other guy wins. But here it's kind of, if it's uh, black to move, then it's a draw. Whereas if it's white to move, then black wins. So basically having the move was a big disadvantage in this position. Having the move in this position was very unfavorable, and that is the point of this a6 move. Getting the pawns uh, placed, the tempos correctly, so that it was white to move in this situation. Okay. Uh, that's it from me, everyone. Uh, check in chat for the uh, schedule of my upcoming streams. Uh, join me tomorrow as I play some uh, bullet chess at the same time. Start uh, 7 p.m. Oslo time. That is um, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. I think I got that right. 7 p.m. Oslo, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, tomorrow I'm taking on the chess.com bullet pool. Uh, so we're going to get some high-level one-minute chess. Um, I'm going to be uh, hosting the St. Louis tournament. Uh, and the games just started an hour ago. And uh, amongst other things, you can catch uh, Magnus Carlsen playing with the white pieces against Sergei Kayakin, his... Uh, World Championship Challenger just two years ago. Uh, when is the next Federated game? asks Oslo. Uh, I guess you're basically asking for my next tournament. And I'm happy to announce that I have just today signed my contract for the St. Louis Fall Classic Tournament. 
Um, so uh, I'll, I'll be playing in St. Louis in October, and um, yeah, I, I guess they will be announcing more uh, uh, information about that. But uh, it's a very interesting uh, field. Uh, all the players are above 2,600, so it's going to be a, a very nice uh, challenge in October. Uh, so that's it from me, and I hope to see you back tomorrow. Bye, everyone.